everybody um, welcome back today I'm gonna try to cover um, blending colors and shading colors um, this is a this is a big topic so the very first thing that you should do is learn how to understand color. Um, you can get a color wheel fairly inexpensively. You can find them on, you can Google color wheels. You, you, there are hundreds of videos on how to understand the color wheel. Um, I looked this morning and there's some very, very, very good ones. Um, I watched a couple by a gentleman that I can't remember his name, but um, he was very thorough in, in explaining and how to add your blacks and whites to get the color that you're looking for. Um, this one, I want to say that I ordered this on Amazon. It was probably few dollars um, it does have the color terminology on the back which is this is the part that you have to understand in order to blend all these colors together um, I'm gonna real quick go over the basics the basics um, hue is just the name of the color orange yellow orange yellow yellow, green, green, that's the hue of that color. Um, the value is lightness to darkness. So if you were coloring with one of these colored pencils and you went real hard on there and you lightened up and lightened up and lightened up, that's the value. Um, the intensity, that's the purity of a color. So brightness to dullness. Um, it can also be referred to as saturation. Um, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You cannot achieve red, yellow, and blue by mixing any other color together. Um, you can achieve all colors by mixing red, yellow, or blue. So those are your primary colors. Your secondary colors are green, orange, and purple. That's made by mixing two of those together. So if you mix yellow and red, you get orange. And if you mix blue and red, you get purple. And if you mix yellow and blue, you get green. So on the color wheel, your primary colors are here and your secondary colors are in between those because that's what you mixed to get those colors. Um, your, I don't know how to say this, tertiary colors can be made, I'm sure I butchered that. Um, there's six of those and they can be made by mixing one primary color with a secondary color. So, you mixed red and yellow to get orange. So if you take now take orange and add more red, you get or red orange. And if you take your orange and add more yellow, you get yellow orange. So um, your warm colors are reds, oranges, and yellows. So as you can see, those are warm. And that kind of your yellow green kind of falls into. A warmer color. Anything you add red or yellow to or orange is going to make it a warmer color. Your cool colors are blues, greens, and purples unless you add yellow or red to that. So these are your nice cool colors. Green is also kind of considered a neutral color so it can be either cool or warm. Um, now, 
there's a whole lot of other things. Um, tint is adding white. Tone is adding gray. Shade is adding black. Um, neutral grays are a combination of white and black. And then we have all of these other grays. So these are these are your um, warm tones. So these are grays that have a little bit of um, brown shades or red. Um, if you have alcohol markers, they don't refer to these as warm, cool. They refer to them as reds, um, red grays, green grays, blue grays. They do have a warm and, and cool palette, but it's important to understand which grays are mixed with what because that's these are considered red grays so that's what you would mix that's what you would shade your reds with unless you're wanting a different um, outcome but these are cool grays um, these are mixed with blues so you get a, a bluer shade so you would want to use these with blues, greens. Um, again, your alcohol markers have blue grays and green grays. And as you can see, this is this one right here is, is pretty green. And these over here are a little bit more blue. Um, your slate grays are going to fall under blue because they have a lot of blue in them. And then you have some... Um, lavender I think there's a pink gray and those are just that color mixed with gray um, and then in your prismacolors and also alcohol markers you have brown grays um, in prismacolors called French but it has been mixed with some brown or yellows so it's good to sort these out and as you can see I mean you can see in the color on the barrel here you can see the blues and the greens which kind of the tone in there of what it's been mixed with this, this one looks really purple to me right here so it's probably got a lot of red in it so uh, my my Karen Brush Pro markers, they come in a cool gray, a neutral gray, which is black and white, and then a warm gray, which has reds in it. Um, I'm going to cover all these a little bit more in a minute. There's a lot on my paper. Okay, now those um, basics for your grays also fall into your colored pencils so if you were going to shade this and your dark color you picked out was like um, this is moss green and so when you color with this you can see that this green has got a lot of yellow in it. So let's say this is your darkest green and you want to add something to this. You don't want to then go and get one of these greens that have blue in them. So as you can see, that's a very blue green. And this one next to this one, that's very blue. So you don't want to mix those because it's never going to blend for you unless you're doing like <clears throat> um, like you have a nature picture and you're sitting outside and you're drawing like green grass. You want to look and see, do your shadows put off a blue shadow? Then you might want to add some of that, but it's still probably always going to be in the yellow tones when you're working with a yellow pencil. Um, this one still has blue in it, even though it looks like an, a pretty neutral 
green. It's still mixed with blue. Um, uh, this is grass green. It's also, it also has a blue tint. Um, so you don't want to mix those with those in your drawings. You want to go with, so let's see, this is moss green. So you want to go with something like lime peel right here as a, a next to that color. But you don't want to just color it like that. And you don't want to go over the top like this with your light to dark. And you don't want to go over the top with your dark like this. The proper way to shade with your colored pencils is we're gonna do it on this side so you want this side dark and remember that the value of your color is how dark you go so this is value It's how hard you press on your pencil. So the harder you press, the darker you get. And the, the lighter you press, the lighter you get. Also, it matters when you do this where you hold your pencil. If you're holding your pencil here, you're going to get dark colors. If you're holding your pencil back here, you're going to lighten up on the, on the hold on your pencil. It's just, it's just how your hand pushes down. And if you hold way back here, you get really light. So if you're somebody that's that draws heavy handed and you want to learn how to relax a bit on your pencil, move your hold on your pencil from way up here and move it back. So if you want a lot of control and detail, you want to hold down here. If you're trying to really lighten up, you want to move back on your pencil. So on here, we're going to push down because I want the dark. Now let's say that we have some light coming from this side. So we're going to start, we're going to start blending out to a lighter color. So in your pencils and also markers, um, like alcohol markers, you want to, you always go for light to dark on alcohol markers. It's totally opposite of this. So here, I'm going to start adding in some of the lime peel color. So what we want to do is lighten up our hold and add some lighter layers of this. So you want it right here, you want it a little darker, and then you want it to get lighter over here. So now when you go back in and you add this one, I needed to sharpen this pencil. You're picking up some of that. You're mixing, you're mixing your colors like you would on a palette, only you're doing it right on your paper. So that's in a little bit lighter. And then this gets a little bit lighter. And then you want to go to this color by itself. And now to get the light, the lightest part, you want to blend this out. So lighten up your, lighten up your touch on there. see I have it really light over here because that's where my light's going to go in. And now I have um, chartreuse. So all of these, as you can see by the um, color on the barrel, have these are all yellow greens. So you want to go back in here where you left off with that last color and pick up some of that color in this one and then blend it out. Now, you can you can 
add white to this where you want it really light or you can just leave it really light and then you want to go back over and kind of now you want to go back and blend it a little better so that you get a better saturation of your color right here this needs a little bit more color up here and now you work back light to dark and now you want to take your dark one and go back a little bit over this but you don't want to push down because you don't want your dark coming up here and you just keep blending lightly until you get that looking like um, like a ball and also it really helps if you're doing a circle or another shape um, a box you would want to make your color lines straight on a circle as you can see I'm kind of arching them because you want to follow the shape of the circle um, it's the exact same if you do this with a pencil um, hang on let me get a pencil because I wasn't prepared for that This is a charcoal pencil. Um, if you're shading um, a circle, this is a very poor circle, but let's pretend it's a good circle. You're gonna push down heavy on the, the side that has no light. And then you're just gonna, again, loosen your grip on the pencil a little bit. with pencil you have a blender so you can blend it out um, there are blenders for your colored pencils but I don't think they work as well as learning how to do it like this so you just want to keep holding less and less on your pencil and then when you blend this out when you blend that You get your different tones there so now my finger is black and I'll have it on my face in a minute um, it's it works the same with all of these colors so as you can see on these um, this is crimson is about the truest red I could come up with in my pencils um, raspberry has a little bit of blue mixed in it um, this is permanent red as you can see it's orange um, this one has orange in it this one has orange in it and that one probably has some blues in it I would say and that one um, looks like it's got some purples in it so sometimes for me the reds are really hard to tell but like I mean obviously these two that's orange that's obviously got purples in it so when you're picking to shade make sure if you pick this pencil that all of your all of your other reds are orange reds if you pick this pencil you want to make sure all of your other reds are violet reds so just that's how you're going to make a good blend and a good color um, transition and same with same with these um, this has white mixed with it 
so it's a it's a much lighter yellow this has orange mixed with it well it says it's orange my artesia colors are a little wonky for me um this is more of a yellow orange not um i don't feel like that's orange orange um turmeric this has a little bit of brown mixed in it so you get those brown tones this is a brown tone this is an orange tone and this is yellow so that's how you when you look at the barrels it will kind of tell you so as you can see these two are browns these are oranges this has got some orange in it and these two are yellows so when you're picking be sure that you pick the same tones um, and then let's say you are going to shade this but you don't want to do it you don't want to blend it like this you want to put in a shadow I'm just gonna quickly color in this whole circle and I'm gonna do it kind of a mid value here because we want to add a little bit of shading to this now really you should stay in the lines when you color but I'm in a hurry so okay now we're gonna play with the gray so these are our <coughs> excuse me these are our um, warm grays so these have been mixed with some red and so this one see this one's a yellow this one's kind of been mixed with some yellows um, you can really tell that one's been mixed with red, so we may go with that one. So this is 50% warm gray. So that means they have made a neutral gray out of black and white, and then they've mixed in red 50% to get this. So when you shade, you can really see now that that's a red gray, so you can see that it blends really well with your red. It picks up your red. Now, if you went in here and picked, these are, these are the brown or French grays. If you picked one of these, you're gonna get a totally different, it's gonna be a much warmer tone. On your red and there's nothing wrong with you can blend any of these grays with any color it just depends on what the shadow is if you're in a really shady area outside like deep woods and you took a photograph of that and then you put it into Photoshop and then you take your ink dropper and you pick up the shadows, you would be surprised at the colors. You can go on to your um, color picker and look at the color that it picked up and it's gonna be in the blue shades. You're gonna have lots of blue shades in those because the deep woods is cool. It doesn't get a lot of sunlight, which is warm. So you're gonna have all the cool shades of gray in your um, shadows. So, speaking of cool shades, we're gonna pick these up. These are really blues, um, and I'll show you what you get when you blend that. So you get a really blue shadow in there. Now, if you have uh, 
you had a yellow color that you colored and you wanted to add a gray shadow. Now, most shadows really aren't a true grays. Um, that's why you get all these color variations because they're not really gray. In nature, it's not really gray. It's combinations of other colors to get that color. So um, let's add in this red gray to that yellow. So red and yellow are warm colors. So you're gonna kind of stay on the warm scale with that. Um, we're gonna use this brown gray because it's got some yellow in it. So this gray would blend really good with yellow. And then you're gonna use your blue gray and you're gonna get more of a green tone because red and, I mean, yellow and blue make green. So you're gonna get more of a green gray out of that blue gray. So it's kind of, you kind of have to really learn your color wheel before you can um, start mixing all your colors together. Uh, this is this is the grayed lavender, so you're going to get a whole different color here. And you get a different color here. You get a really purple color here because lavender is blues. Um, blue and red mixed makes purple. And so you're going to have a purpley blue here. So you went into the deep woods and you took a picture of the woods and now you want to try to color it with your pencils. So you're going to have to understand your shadows, your outside shadows. Are they yellow shadows? Are they blue shadows? Or are they red shadows? Because red, yellow, and blue are your primary colors and that's what your grays are going to be mixed with. Um, so that's how you blend and shade. So you can shade with your colored pencils um, or you can shade with your grays. Uh, if you were outside and you took a picture of your grass and it was kind of yellowy grass in a blue area, this is what happens. So you can blend, you can blend these colors to get a lot of different things. So this is your blue green again. And this is slate gray, which has blue in it. As you can see, you get a very blue shadow. So really, next time you go outside, really pay attention to the colors of um, the shadows. A long time ago, I was in, long time ago, I was in high school art class and I was painting an evening scene of water and it was like um, a lake and it had some little inlets coming in. And my first instinct was the picture I was looking at was that that was black. Those inlets were in deep shadow and they were really black. And then my teacher taught me to really look at the, the mix of color in there. And when you do, you start seeing that those aren't really black. They're not a true black shadow. It's more um, deep purples and deep blues. And the closer to the sun and the less in the deep shade, the more yellows and reds and oranges that get mixed in. So um, this is a 90% cool gray. So this is a blue, deep blue, colored gray. 
So this is going to be deep in the woods shading. And then you start moving out of the shade a little bit. Let's see. So this is 90% warm gray. So when you start moving out into the sun a little bit more, this is where your gray starts coming in to these shades. And then I don't think I have the 90, but we'll put in this is a shade where you get into more sunshine. So as you can see, you can even shade your shade out your grays. Um, I really, really encourage you to watch some videos on the color theory. Um, find you a really good color wheel. They are very inexpensive. Most of your art stores will have it. So if you're not in the US, I'm sure you can find an art store with a color wheel. Um, I love this one because it shows you what happens if you add the colors. So by adding more red to a red violet, you get um, kind of a magenta color. And if you take red and you add yellow, obviously you get orange. If you take a red yellow and you add blue, you get, I'm sorry, a red orange and you add blue, you get a um, kind of a, I don't even know, a brownish, a brownish blue. Um, if you take orange and you add white, you get peach. And if you take yellow and add black, you get kind of a, an okra color. So this one really helps figure out uh, your oranges and your, your yellows and your reds and by adding different colors. So, um, let's see, if you, if you take your pencils that we were working with, you can see that's it, that green it's a yellow green, so it's a version of a yellow green. And you added more yellow to it, and you get you get a lighter green. And um, let's go to red. Um, if you add, it doesn't work. Let's so on the reds. Um, if you have a purpley red and you add more red to the purple red, you're going to get this color. So you can use this to pick out your colors to do this. So if you have a, let's say you wanted to do the yellow greens, then you come over here and by adding more yellow, you get this. So this is how you pick your colors. You find you a, a yellow green and then you just add yellow and you get those colors. So this comes in really handy. Um, once you have a really firm understanding of all of these color um, rules back here, then it's not so hard to pick the color. Um, but hope this helps somewhat. I feel like I didn't cover it well. Um, I'm trying to get my paint markers here. So I use, I use grays a lot when I'm doing my um, houses and my little worlds um, because let's say you have, this is your house and it's green here. And then you have, uh, you have another level up here that overhangs this level. And it's brown. And then, um, let's say you have 
a turquoise color down here. So when I go in and I add my, my grays to these, I want to add a cool gray down here where this is overhanging. That was still really wet. And then I want to add, um, let's add a neutral gray to the green. And then we're gonna add warm gray to the brown. And as you can see, you can see the difference there by adding the, the different types of gray. So, um, just do what I just did. Get a page in your book. This is one I had colored uh, alcohol markers on the page before, so they all bled through. So this is, this makes a really good practice page. Um, another thing I do uh, is I hang on to the scrap papers from the books, um, from the paper that I use, if I cut it down, like this one, for instance, is now scrap paper. Um, so if you're getting ready to color something and you're not positive, grab a handful of the colors and um, I always do test. I always do a test color to see if I think they're gonna blend together. So those don't blend together very well. But that and this would blend together really well. So that's a really good way to test your pencils and see if they're going to blend out the way that you want them to. Um, I'm not sure if this one might blend with that one, but I doubt it. So that's really got a lot of brown tones to it. So that's a good way in, in all media, um, whether it's colored pencils, whether it's markers, whether it's uh, fine liners, um, crayons, chalk, whatever you're working with, this is a really good way to find out if your colors are gonna blend together. So always keep your scraps and do this before you go in and just put it on a piece of paper do a little bit of practice and see if you're going to be able to blend the colors together if they work well together so and then especially if you're using your grays because as you can see you're going to get a different that's all one same color of red but those are all different shades of gray so you want to know which one's going to blend the best with your With your color you chose, I'm sorry. My brain is going about 50,000 miles an hour and I can't keep up with it. So, um, if you were going to shade on top of this, then you, you wanna come in here and pick like, this is 90. So you would start with this one as a gray. And then you want to go to like this one's 70 so it's going to be a little lighter and then you want to go this one's 50 and this one is 30 and those are more um, of the warmer brown shades so this would be your lightest gray so they kind of help you blend these by just looking at the numbers on your pencils and I'm getting that as you can see right here it says that this is 30 percent warm gray and that's uh, so it goes this way so that's 30 and 50 70 and 90.
so it kind of helps you know the order to put these in when you're blending them. Um, I think I've covered a lot. I'm not 100% sure this is all 100% accurate. This is how I do it. Um, a lot of this I learned in high school, which, as I said, was many, many years ago. And then I did take some courses for graphic design where I had a refresher course on um, color theory. So it's a really, really good thing to learn if you're a beginner. Um, as I said in the beginning, find videos on color theory and learn your colors and the warm tones and the cold tones and then once you have a firm grasp on that when you start blending colors it's all going to start making sense to you so i hope this helped a little bit um i tried to cover a lot of media in this um, i didn't cover paints but again they fall under the same they fall under the same rules so um I'm looking at my, I'm looking around my desk to see if there's anything else I can help with this study. Um, I think we've got it pretty much covered. Uh, I really hope this was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will see if I can answer them for you. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm sorry if this feels a little uh, spacey when I'm talking but I'm trying to I'm trying to think of all the things to cover in one little short video so again if you have questions just ask and I will answer um, thanks for joining thanks for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video